Hello again, and welcome to Not Quite Not Quite RP Zero America. So here we are in stock with a Blue Dog Design Bureau um, Saturn upper stage and an, you know, a shortened Apollo Block 3. And I'm going to uh, do a kind of a proof of concept uh, slash test here in stock. Just to do something I want to be able to do in, uh, in my RP Zero series in the future. Just uh, kind of proof it in stock to make sure it works. So I also have a little attacher here and uh, docking ports. So first off let us control from that docking port and we'll be targeting uh, this docking port. Alright, oh, we can't target it yet because we're still connected. Alright, so let us let go and then target that. And we're going to use a Navy Fish docking indicator here and then we're going to do a transposition but uh, we're not going to be doing a docking uh, we're instead going to be connecting a tether. So let's just get pointed back around the other way. All right. So I believe the orange indicator, if you have a direct uh, direct dead center, it tells you that you are uh, directly parallel to the other craft. All right. And then the other indicators to, um, are to show you your relative velocities. So there we go. I'd have to turn on uh, RCS to be able to adjust those. So first off, I, I want to to freeze my uh, position relative to the other guy. So let's just sit here at about say 12 meters away as it says. And so if you know, relative velocity, I suppose I'll have to get that down to zero. It's close to zero, all right. And somehow it's, it's wandered off a little bit so we are no longer directly pointed. So let's just try to lock that, all right. And just while we're away, we'll have it spin a little bit because that seems to stabilize things, just hopefully. And we will be away because we're going to send out a person here. Turn on our RCS pack. Everything seems to wander a little bit in space. Well, including the direction. They've changed something at some point. All right, so I want to get close enough. Come on. Be, be kind. Uh, nope. All right, so first I want you to point in that direction. Okay. Seems like you're doing that, kind of. Never quite understand this uh, EVA control system. Come on, we need to get close enough to grab connector. All right. So we now have the connector for the winch that we had hidden in there. And then we want to connect. Um, plug undocked. We want them to still act as two separate craft. They're just connected by that tether. And we'll wait for the doors to come around. I suppose that's not practical for getting somebody back in, but hey, it works here. F for grab and board. All right. And I just want to switch over to the other craft and make sure that it'll be controllable in the future. So let's open up some solar panels. I snuck under here. And there's an antenna knob somewhere. There we go. Extend antenna. All right, so this will be an independently controllable vessel as well. And I want to tell it to control from here and also to target this docking port. Set as target. And so we'll use the OP stockish reaction wheel to point. It's handy. Everybody likes things when it's in their benefit. And so that's why I'm testing this in stock. The reaction wheel is definitely useful for this test, just to save me time and effort to see whether this works or not. All right, so we've got it pointed more or less in the right direction. Looks good. And now let's just spin it up a little bit, just, just a little bit, so it doesn't wander too much while we're away from it. All right, so now we want to point at the other guy. Good. And then we're going to want to go back and use the winch. So now we're pointed. Uh, we also want to be pointed along a certain axis, just just cause it kind of makes it easier to do things. All right, kind of the reaction was a little overpowered, and I'll keep torquing back and forth. All right, so let's switch back over here. Uh, the orientation on this one doesn't matter as much. We'll be doing most of the control from the other one, because that's where the people are. So we care more about that side. All right, and now I want to turn on the winch. Show the GUI for the winch. I could probably close that now. Oh, well, why not leave it open? All right, so max out. I'm going to reel out the winch here. Oh, no. <laughs> Wrong option. That yanked the winch in. So hopefully they were centered enough. Wow, nice bounce off. 
Nice. All right, so I still want them to stay pointed at each other. So I'm reeling the winch out. That tells you the total uh, winch length, and that tells you kind of the free, uh, the free cable length that we have. They're wandering well to each other. And the maximum you can reel this uh, current cable length out is 50 meters. And so it'll just stop when we get there. All right. And then let's switch over, switch back here, and we'll see that it's flying away at you know one meter a second, over one meter a second. So let's just try to slow that down a little bit because we want to get to the end of the tether, but we don't want to yank it too hard. So that will kind of disturb our experiment just a little bit and make it a little harder to carry out. In particular, when I do this in a uh, real solar system, so you'll see the target speed, see it reversed. So when the cable yanked, it yanked us back towards the other guy, and so. Let's just kind of keep ourselves out at distance. So yeah, we won't be able to use uh, reaction wheels. RCS fuel will be a little more precious. And so now we want to start spinning. So I want to start spinning along the axis of Earth. So let's try I here, or, or well, Kerbin. So I, um, it is not too necessary just for aesthetics. I'm trying to spin things such that the plane that we're spinning in is the same as, it'll kind of look the same as we orbit the planet. All right, so now we're swinging it around. So that guy's going to kind of be yoinked along. So you're going to see it in here. It's going to be very obvious that it kind of points towards us, and then it continues to wobble around. It sent its own local center of mass you know, point away from us, and then it kind of maxes out. It's kind of a, an odd type of pendulum. And there we go. It swings on back. So while all that is going on, I love to have all kinds of crazy windows pulled up. So we want to mark turn on acceleration here and so now it's going to be showing if you, you may have noticed this number is gradually increasing as we go on so I just want to recorrect my orientation because I'd, I'd like this to this this rotation to be along the cardinal direction just for aesthetics so oop, don't want to hit that anymore because now we do want to be in this rotating plane so I just kind of want to keep my nose pointed at the other guy so just keep purple keep pointed at purple all right anyway so now let's just spin back uh, continue to add the spin here. So ideally for this, there's so we're creating an artificial experience of gravity for these guys, a centri centrifugal force or centrifugal force, whichever version of it you want to, you want to, you know, whichever frame of reference you're thinking about it from. And so we want the cable to be at its maximum length because that's going to minimize the other uh, negative kind of you know, uh, acceler accelerative forces that you experience by being in this rotating frame of reference. Uh, the, you know, the shorter the cable is, there's all kinds of negative things like the Coriolis effect that you'll you'll feel, uh, and kind of making that uh, transformation between coordinate systems. But you know that's the math you you would see behind it uh, in the calculation. But ultimately, it just kind of makes people nauseous when you you know you, if it feels like gravity, you want it to feel as much like real gravity as possible. And so the longer the cable is, the better for that. So that's why we reel it out to maximum length, and. So we'll stop it around half a g because that's not that's not too bad at all. Um, if we can, if by using a tether here, we can get a person to experience half a g, that is pretty amazing. Because rather than having to sit in microgravity all the way to say Mars for many months, uh, you know, with your legs kind of degrading and your eyeballs having trouble and all the other negative side effects of microgravity, uh, if you can just take the spent stage that threw you towards Mars attach a tether to it, use RCS to spin yourself up, well, uh, then you've got uh, a, you know, a more sustainable situation going on, which is what we want on the way to Mars. We want astronauts to be in you know, as good of condition as they can. We don't want them to have kind of had their bodies waste away before they experience you know, many Gs of re-entry and then you know, um, one Martian G, uh, which is something like a third of an Earth G, uh, once they're down there. So you're seeing these kind of variations in the in, in the force they're feeling, and that's as we wobble around this purple point here. So I'm just trying to null that out, uh, and that that goes two ways because both of them could be uh, kind of be wobbling relative to their center of mass. So let's just switch to the other one, and there we go. I'm just going to try to do the same thing. Delta V really doesn't matter here, so let's close that. Uh, mark reset. So another interesting thing you may have noticed is that the experience in G-force is different from both perspectives which is interesting because they're both at different positions in this reference frame relative to their kind of combined center of mass. 
So it's lower for this one because it's, this is heavier, and so it is, the center of mass is closer to this you know, part of the combined system. Here we go and see the gravity fluctuations have, um, have leveled out uh, is, you know, not too badly. We're still wobbling a bit relative to the purple point. So now I want to orient this along a cardinal direction if I can, just because it'll be easier to... Uh, what I really want to do when I'm in doing this in R, uh, RSS in my RP0 career is to use a bit of RCS left on the dead stage here to, to spin things up, just because. Leave as much reserve fuel in the other as possible. So let's just try to get along this cardinal direction. Come on. Okay, and then close enough. So now figure out which direction I would need to pulse the RCS to increase our spin. Nope, I think that's going down. So looks like it's K from this perspective, this orientation. Fair enough. And so hopefully the G forces will continue to increase as we you know spin up this spin up the two craft from this perspective. And we're going to induce a bit more wobble because the RCS here is very clearly not around the local center of mass. You're around the center of mass of this dead stage, it's near the butt. Uh, if I had them a bit closer to the center, which is probably what I'll end up doing when I build something like this in RP0 uh, for my for my actual series, um, then you know then we'll get less wobble induced by by trying to spin it up from this perspective. So I'm going to continue spinning it up until we get to about one g. Oh, come on. Sorry, I'm just also trying to stop it from uh, from wobbling. And slowly but surely it spins up. Yeah, it's a little more of a pain from this side, just because the RCS is closer to the bottom. So I'll switch back to this reference frame and use this. Uh, the key might have changed. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, it looks like now, because of the orientation we're in, it's... I think I'm pretty sure I'm spinning spinning it up. Yeah, it's increasing. Oh, there we go. I guess we're above 1G now. That's, that's plenty good. All right, so you can see we have now reached this, um, this plateau. And we are still definitely seeing some serious wobble. We're still pointed at the other guy. I mean, he, clearly, that's showing that the other docking port is wobbling relative to us. So let's just go over here and try to balance that out a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, you know, that, uh, that's an important thing in reality. You, you don't want things to be wobbling uh, because that's going to stress out the tether. That's going to give you an uneven, irregular experience of, of gravity. And so you, you do the spin up much more gradually, much more carefully. You have RCS very nicely balanced around center of mass, all that jazz. All right, so now we've stabilized it nicely. So let's just, there you go, as nice as we can. So let's switch back to this craft. So now they're experiencing tons of gravity. So there's another, um, let me try to remember, is there another thing I want to, oh right, so there's two other things I want to show. So first off, we can, well, we'll, uh, we'll close this now. now. Now that we're spun up, they kind of keep each other pointed towards each other because of the tension on that, on that tether. Uh, so let's just zoom out so we can see this frame of reference relative to the planet. Uh, so now to actually use this in a real game, so I, I couldn't, wouldn't be able to do that because it's producing g-forces. See, if I hit, if I try to time warp, it's going to say, you cannot time warp. Uh, because clearly it's experiencing acceleration. So what I can do is from this pers from this perspective, I can tell it to make them a docked craft. So now it thinks of this as a single craft that is just rotating around its center of mass. From this perspective, it doesn't think of it having a g-force. And so I can time warp. So let's just do a quick cycle of time warp. So you can see you know, that the plane I have them rotating in is kind of kind of keeps looking the same as we move around the planet. You see what I mean? All right, so let's slow that back down. And uh, so now I'm going to, uh, now sorry for the dizzy making, but we need to zoom back in on the tether on the winch so I can plug mode. So switch it back, there we go. We now have it as two separate craft again. And from the perspective here, maybe this will give you a better feel for you know, why they perceive gravity. They're spinning around a shared center of mass. Look at those beautiful shadows passing over those uh, here. 
uh, it looks more more contrasty, more clear to me. Uh, but yeah, my screen's more locally bright than probably the YouTube video is. Isn't that pretty? The light going across those surfaces. All right. So you know, with this rotation rate, the the hot, the slower they're rotating around their center of mass, you know, the fewer RPMs they're doing per you know, RPMs per minute. Um, the less weird it will feel from being inside those craft. And so that's why to have a longer tether feels better for them. Where do you go, Earth? There you go, Earth. All right. So we've got this relatively stable, not terribly wonky G-force that they're feeling. So one other interesting thing I want to show. Uh, so of course, now, you know, I demonstrated I can actually use this in a game, which is awesome because of persistent rotation, to telling them to be one craft. I can actually throw something at Mars and do that which is awesome. So now let's do locked mode again. So now we're going to torture our astronauts. So we are going to reel the cable in slowly, and that is going to cause them to experience a higher force. As you can see very fairly quickly, the um, experienced g-forces are increasing. The amount of tension on the tether is increasing because, you know, higher g-forces all the time. Sorry, let me just change out of this frame of reference because it's dizzy and dizzy making. There's the earth down there. So as this tether gets shorter and shorter to conserve momentum, uh, they'll be spinning faster and faster, so more RPMs. So that's going to end up causing them to feel more artificial gravity, but or also more Coriolis effect, the other uh, frame of reference effects that are undesirable. So slowly but surely their spin increases, their gravity increases, and you know, the cable isn't, isn't exactly short right now. Uh, it's still, you know, most of the length it was before, but, you know, even from this side, which is the one that experiences lower g-forces, sorry, let me see, oh, it looks like it had it, not free cam, sorry about that, the dizzy making. So from these guys' perspective, they're already feeling 3.5 g's, going up and up and up, are we getting more wobble? Oh, right, I guess because we were two craft, then you know, when, then one, then two, they no longer have a target. So fair enough. I'll have to keep that in mind um, if I'm using it for any duration missions, because changing whether it's one craft or two craft or whatever will kind of mess with uh, that perception of contract configurator, whether it's still the same mission or not. So the G forces continue to increase. So sorry, in this uh, in this kind of test sandbox mode, I don't have. Uh, they'd have little gravity bars if I'd turn that on. Sorry, in, in my original earlier uh, unfilmed testing, they did, and that was very neat. Watching the g-forces increase until they passed out, uh, and then shortly after, you know, one or two of them passed out, the the cable will break. So faster and faster it rotates. So more RPMs means, in this case, you know, higher perceived gravitational force, greater tension on the cable until the cable breaks. One thing. Uh, you may also have noticed is that the orbit looks like it's doing crazy things, and that's because this is a kind of dual game of hammer throw. So when the cable breaks, you know, they head off in very different directions, and so they end up in two very different orbits where they were previously sharing one. Like a mini version of a um, of an, like a, of an orbital arm uh, space. Oh, sorry, I forget the name. Uh, Isaac Arthur did a video on them recently. There we go. So very quickly, the other uh, the other craft recedes, and we can now uh, spin it down, and they are no longer experiencing G forces, you know, real or otherwise. So that has been a very successful test. That is a tool that I can definitely make use of in my uh, RP Zero campaign. I'll just need to do a bit of testing and practicing. You know, maybe use it on the way towards Mars. Use it for low uh, low Earth orbit duration tests. So. My astronauts don't have to experience you know, meaningless damage to their bodies in, in zero gravity when our whole goal is to end up on, you know, on gravitational bodies like the Moon or Mars. So thanks for watching this uh, proof of concept testing video. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.